Hi everybody, welcome back. We're looking at Jeremy Duff, Elements of New Testament Greek. We're in chapter 12, section 12.4, looking today at third declension adjectives. Now, I promised you some good news in the previous video. Here's the good news right there on page 139 of Jeremy Duff's book. The few adjectives that follow the third declension. There are very few adjectives that follow the third declension. That's good news. This isn't something you're going to come across too often. But uh, you do need to learn it, because not least because it leads to other things which will be useful in the future. And moreover, it's actually not that complicated. It builds on the principles that we have been thinking about in relation to the third declension so far. So let's just start thinking about this and build, so to speak, from the ground up. And try and work out what information we're going to need to know in order to construct the full third declension of an adjective which follows the third declension. Okay, so we know already that in the third declension the masculine and feminine forms are the same. Well that's great news, slashes by 33% the number of things we need to learn. We're expecting the same thing in the adjective and that indeed is the case. So they follow the same pattern of declension in masculine and feminine forms. The second thing we know about the uh, third declension is that the stem in general does not appear in the nominative case. So when we're specifying a third declension noun, we need to know the nominative singular form, sorry, it does appear in the nominative plural, it doesn't appear in the nominative singular. So we need to know the nominative singular and some other portion of the declension, we have the genitive singular conventionally, which will tell us the stem. Well, that also is the case with adjectives. The nominative singular form of adjectives in the third declension is different. And so when we're specifying what the adjective is, we'll need to know the nominative singular in both the masculine and, which is also the feminine, and also the neuter genders and then in addition to that we will need to know the genitive singular in order to give us the stem of the adjective. Once we have those three pieces of information we should be able to generate the whole of the declension for a third declension adjective. So let's take the example that Duff gives us. I'm looking here at page 139 and I'll leave that up just for a second. The example he gives us is the uh, adjective more, which is pleon, pleon, pleon os. Now, what does this tell us? Very simply different colour. It tells us the nominative singular form in the masculine and feminine genders. It tells us the masculine singular form in the neuter gender and it tells us also the genitive singular which we'll need in order to get the stem, this bit, so that we can then build the rest of the declension. If we've got that information, then we should be able to use it in order, use it to generate the whole of the declension, masculine and feminine, singular, plural, neuter, and all four cases. So let me just click my fingers for a moment, move this up to the top, and then we'll write the declension out together and you'll see exactly what I mean. Hold on one second.
Okay, as promised, here it is. Play on, play on, play on us. This is the nominative singular in the masculine and feminine forms of the adjective. So let's do that first. Masculine or feminine. Play own. And then we generate the rest of the declension using the stem that we know from over here. So how are we going to do that? Very simple. Play on. Ah. Play on a. Ah. Play on os. That's the genitive which we have in the lexical form. Play on it. Play on s. Play on ass. Play on own. Play your. Oh, I'll write that one out in full for you. Play on sin. Is that what you're expecting? I don't think so, because you know already that when we have a combination of letters like this in the dative. Dashes in so they don't get confused. In the dative plural form of a third declension noun, what tends to happen is that pleosin. Pleosin. And just to remind you where you can find that in Jeremy Duff's book, you find it halfway down on the right on page 136. It's not an irregularity really in the form, it's just a pronunciation thing. But that gives you masculine and feminine. Pleon, pleona, pleonos, pleone, pleones, pleonas, pleonon, pleosin generated from that stem and that nominative masculine and feminine singular form. So how are we going to do the neuter? Very simply. We'll start with this. Play on. Neuter nominative singular. Now how do we generate the rest of the declension for a neuter uh, third declension noun or adjective? Well we know that nominative and accusative are the same so it's going to be play on, play on and then the same as this, play on os, play on it and then over here play on which is that stem again and then what's the ending for nominative and accusative neuter plural? It's the same as with the neuter nouns and adjectives that you're already familiar with. Play on a, play on a, play on own, and then of course our old friend from over here, play your sin. So notice this whole lot over here is the same. It's not something you need to learn, it's just something that you generate from the rules that you've already become familiar with. Masculine and feminine are the same as each other with the unusual nominative singular, uh, unusual nominative singular in the neuter as well, but then we generate the rest of the declension just from the stem of the adjective which you get from the genitive singular form which is given you in the lexical form of the adjective. So just to recap when you uh, read about or when you encounter in a lexicon or in some other place the, uh, the lexical form of a third declension adjective, you will see three words. Masculine and feminine, nominative singular. Neuter, nominative singular. And then the genitive singular, which gives you the stem. From that, you can generate everything. So it looks horrendously complicated because you've got this massive table to learn at the top of page 139. And it's really, really simple. You knew it already. You could have figured it out just from what you already knew. Not complicated. Keep going. 20 minutes a day, 30 minutes a day, five or six days a week, and we will nail this stuff and have you reading the New Testament in Greek in no time at all. We're almost at the end of this chapter, would you believe it? We've just got a couple of other sections to go, then we'll do some examples and crack on to chapter 13. Well done. God bless. Bye for now.